Today, we're looking at Tesla beyond the headlines. Yes, there's deliveries, market share, AI, autonomy, and of course, the cyber cap story. Okay, it is true. Tesla did lose the EV crown. And it's also true, deliveries dipped. But that's not the real story. The real story is what Tesla's building next and why 2026 could be a turning point. So today, I want to walk through five analyst takes that explain why short-term noise may be hiding something much bigger. In this first clip, we'll watch a CNBC interview with Canaccord Genuity analyst George Gianaricas. He talks about Tesla losing the EV crown and why that headline misses the bigger picture. He explains why autonomy, robots, and cybercap matter more than pure car sales going forward. George, I don't see Tesla getting the crown back anytime soon because there's a lot of volume coming out of China, right? Look, Chinese competition has been incredibly robust for years. They do a really good job, not only in their domestic market, but in other markets as well, especially Europe. But when you think about Tesla, it's really about growing other products in the next several years, including the robots and also the cyber cab. If you listen to what Elon Musk said on the last quarterly earnings call, I thought it was super interesting because he said for the first time in a while, he was actually more confident in building capacity for EVs based on what's happening with autonomy. So autonomy, robotics, and to a certain extent, energy storage are the future of the company. Almost way ahead of Tesla in this. So why should investors bet on it? Tesla has a completely different approach, right? So both obviously want to build robo-taxis. Waymo uses multiple sensor sets, and Tesla famously uses only cameras. Now. As soon as Elon Musk feels comfortable with unsupervised FSD in each successive market, they could just enable the vehicles on the road. In theory, Tesla could build millions of robo-taxis a quarter if it wanted to, or even every year. So they have the in essential intelligence and sensor set on the vehicles already in the road and could produce them en masse, while yeah. Waymo has to thousands at a time as opposed to Tesla, which you can do it very quickly. I get that. But a few days ago, we just had that headline out of San Francisco with the power outage where the traffic lights went out and all the Waymos stopped. And Waymo, Google, Alphabet, has been doing this for years and years. It's relatively politically neutral in the eyes of people. Elon Musk and Tesla are not, as we experienced over the past year especially. Do we really think and should investors really bet that Elon Musk, when he is ready, is going to be able to spread robotaxis across the country and the world? That's what he's been planning for years. Waymo went for the extremely safe but hard-to-scale product, and Tesla went for the not-as-safe but extremely easy-to-scale product. So as soon as he feels ready, he can launch these in particular markets because the vehicles, like I said, are already on the road. Where his spend really I mean, is robust. He can on the try, call. George, but if these are really going to be unsupervised Teslas driving around. There's regulatory issues and burdens, but certainly country by country, if not state by state. How easy a time should investors reckon that's going to be? You bring up a really good point. And so part of the bet earlier last year was that the federal government would have federal rules and not do it on a state by state basis. We're still waiting to see how robust those federal rules will be. But you bring up a good point. Like it's going to have to be state by state, city by city. And that's what we've seen so far in Austin and San Francisco. That service area expands at an incremental rate as opposed to happening all at the same time. And how much money? do you model that Tesla can make on an operating basis if it continues to own the vehicles to get this robo-taxi service up and running? I mean, it's one thing to sell or lease a vehicle outright. It's another thing to continue to own the vehicle and just take a fee on the usage of it. That, I imagine, requires a lot of a different kind of work. It's a really good question. And the way we think about it is that in the United States, there are 24 billion ride hailing miles across the country per year. That includes like the Uber and the Lyft mile. So if you assume that Tesla gets to about a dollar a mile, which is what we assume by 2030, in the United States alone, they have a 24 billion mile addressable market. But then if you extend that to other markets across the world, that balloons significantly. The goal long term, right, is that boat taxis can disrupt not just ride hailing, but transport at large. But for that to happen, we have to make that dollar move to about 25 cents per mile. And in our opinion, that's going to take a really long time. All right, let's slow this down and look at this like we are Tesla investors. 
Of course, CNBC led with the scary stuff, right? Deliveries are down. BYD passes Tesla. Stock starts the year red. But watch what George did. He shifted that focus, right? Away from unit sales and toward what Tesla's becoming. Okay, and I think that difference is actually what matters. Yes, China is competitive. BYD and others are making solid EVs at low prices. Tesla was never going to dominate global EV volume forever. That was really never the main goal. What matters more is how much Tesla earns per vehicle and what new businesses it can unlock. I think that's where autonomy, of course, comes in. Gene Enriquez pointed out something I think it's easy to miss from Elon's last earnings call. Elon isn't confident because EV demand is exploding. He's confident because autonomy changes the math. Tesla isn't just asking, can we sell another Model Y? They're asking, can this car make money on its own? That's the CyberCab idea. CNBC compares Tesla to Waymo, and the contrast is important. Waymo's careful, sensor-heavy, very controlled. Tesla's taking the opposite bet. Camera only, AI first, built to scale. That's actually very risky, much riskier earlier on. But if it works, it spreads fast. So here's the key investor point. Tesla already has millions of cars on the road with the hardware already installed. So when unsupervised FSC is ready, Tesla can just flip the switch, market by market. Waymo can't do that. Yes, of course, regulation matters. Yes, politics matter. Rollouts will be slow. But slow does not mean small. The number Gina Ricas gives is important. About 24 billion ride-hailing miles per year in the U.S. alone. If Tesla captures like a slice at around a dollar per mile, that's tens of billions in revenue, high margin revenue. So the lost EV crown headline, <laughs> that's just short-term noise. If autonomy works at scale, especially with CyberCab in 2026, the entire business model changes. Wall Street hasn't fully priced that in. So next, we're going to watch CNBC interviewing Stifle analyst Steven Gangaro. He explains why Tesla still has upside, even after softer delivery numbers. And he focuses on why full self-driving and robo-taxis are far more important than just selling cars. Stephen has a $500 price target on Tesla shares, implies about a 16% gate. I know it's late. What's the thesis to the upside, given the delivery numbers that Phil LeBeau just talked about? The real upside, and he mentioned it briefly, was when we look at Tesla, obviously car deliveries matter. But the real driver of the stock, we believe, over the next 12 to 18 months is the progress they make on full self-driving and then ultimately the robo-taxi initiative. We think you'll see data points throughout 2026 that are positive on those fronts, which we believe will help drive the stock higher. Yeah, 508. I don't want to shortchange you on the $508 on that price target. Tesla has a market cap that is greater than all the U.S. market car companies combined. You throw in some European companies, combine them. It's still bigger. The robo-taxi, robots, all the stuff that you just talked about and more. If somebody says, Stephen, this market cap doesn't make sense, what's your basic answer to just that really easy question? We hear that a lot, right? And what I tell people is if you're buying Tesla because they sell cars, you're buying the wrong company, right? You're investing in Tesla right now because of the optimism and enthusiasm around autonomy over time. And their positioning in the autonomous driving world on their full self-driving initiative and then ultimately the robo-taxi side is really why you buy the stock. There, There is some risk to what they're doing. And we've talked a lot about this in our notes, their approach, which is basically a fully camera-based system with AI to drive their full self-driving. There's risk to whether they can actually do this completely unsupervised without LiDAR in the cars. But that is the proposition that Tesla has set forth. And that ultimately is what is the value creator for the company. This clip really shows the gap between media framing and long-term investors. Deliveries still matter, but they're not the main driver anymore. What moves Tesla stock now is progress on FSD and robo-taxis. And Wall Street doesn't need perfection. They're looking for momentum. So focus on the next 12 to 18 months, right? More FSD data, more features, early signs of robo-taxis. That lines up with what Tesla's doing. More FSD rollouts, more regions, eventually commercial use. Then CNBC brings up valuation, and Gangaro's answer is pretty simple. If you value Tesla like a car company, it looks expensive. It is expensive. If you value it as an autonomous platform, though, it makes much more sense. Cars fund the mission, but autonomy is the payoff. 
Yeah, he's also honest about the risks. Camera only autonomy is not the easy path, right? No LiDAR, no safety net. But here's the thing. Risk is where upside comes in. If this were already proven, the stock wouldn't be controversial. So the real question isn't, is Tesla expensive? It's this. Do you believe Tesla can lead autonomy at scale? If yes, the valuation works. If no, it doesn't. Okay, now we got an article from Gene Munster breaking down Tesla's latest delivery numbers. He explains why the situation is stabilizing, not worsening, and why that matters for investors who's focused on the autonomy part. This is where headlines can really mislead you. On the surface, Tesla missed delivery expectations. Year-over-year -year decline. Looks bad. But Gene Munster, he adjusted for the timing, right? He said a lot of buyers rushed purchases to beat expiring tax credits. About, he said, 55,000 vehicles. Adjust for that, and deliveries were down about 5%. Earlier this year, that decline was closer to 13%. So this isn't about getting worse, right? It's stabilizing. It's stabilizing, and stabilizing matters. Because once deliveries stabilize, investors can stop obsessing over the quarters and refocus on autonomy. Gene also points out market share. He said that U.S. EV sales fell about 35%. Tesla deliveries fell 16%. Okay, and so if you look at that perspective, that's outperformance. Early in the quarter, Tesla's U.S. EV share hit 65%. That's not weakness, that's strength. So the takeaway here is simple. Deliveries are stabilizing, market share is rising, Tesla has breathing room, and that gives them the space to focus on FSD and robo-taxis. Next, our favorite, Wedbush analyst Dan Ives. He reacted to Tesla's latest delivery numbers. And he explains why this sets Tesla up for 2026 and why AI and autonomy and cybercap, they're the main drivers behind his bullish views. Dan Ives called this better than feared. Tesla delivered about 418,000 vehicles below estimates, but above the whisper numbers. So in a tough setup, that's solid. Model 3, Model Y held up. That's the core business. Weakness came from the smaller models that don't drive the long-term story. Pricing helped too, right? Lower cost trims are keeping the demand live. Europe, still tough mainly because FSC isn't approved yet. But once it is, possibly early as 2026, Europe could rebound fast. So now the bigger picture. Energy is growing quietly, profitably. Mega pack, Powerwall. And then the big swing, of course, AI, right? Autonomy, Cybercap, testing in Austin, early production, mid-2026. That's the moment, I think, that Tesla will shift from a car company to this AI platform. So the numbers Dan throws out are aggressive, but the core point matters. Tesla didn't need a perfect quarter. It needed stability, and it got it. Finally, William Blair explained why they're staying neutral on Tesla despite the strong momentum. They focus on valuation, energy storage, and investor risks. This is the reminder that not everyone is bullish. William Blair stays neutral. Main concern, valuation. He said a PE over 300 scares traditional analysts. From a car company lens, Tesla looks expensive. But notice this, they're not bearish. Deliveries were fine. Tax credits explain the dip. Cars alone don't drive the stock anymore. Energy is where they do see the upside, right? Deployments are strong, run rate near 57 gigawatt hours, possibly 120 gigawatt hours next year. AI data centers, they all need storage. That's the real tailwind. They flag the risks, right? China competition, geopolitics, Elon, the key man risk, of course. This is more show me more than sell the stock. If Tesla hits autonomy and energy milestones, some of these neutral firms could actually flip bullish. That's when the re-ratings are going to happen. So I think here's the takeaway for me, right? Deliveries and headlines, they're just noise. <laughs> the real value is many of us know already, FSD, robotaxis, cybercab, AI, and energy. Tesla is not just selling cars anymore. It's building platforms. And that's why I think 2026, that's the year that's really going to matter.